So whether we're talking about competitive or collaborative, we're always talking about the underlying capitalist kind of basis. Right. Um, and a, a capitalist in the 1970s had a company that was driven across five stakeholders. You had the customers, you had your employees, you had society at large, i.e. taxes, you had the environment, and you had shareholders. And arguably today, you have single stakeholder capitalism where the shareholder is, is the only kind of individual stakeholder that matters to the majority of capitalists. The others are only there so long as, as it's for the benefit of, of the individual kind of shareholders. So when we look at your example with Netflix, you know, you say Netflix is doing a great job of leading within their organization, which is do what is in Netflix's best interest. But if you look at Netflix capitalist approach, it's do what's in our shareholders' best interest. And how do you rationalize those two? Well, so that brings up a very interesting point, which is the, um, you know, I guess disconnect in the expectations of the management and the shareholders. Um, the, what I mean by that is that, so, you know, to be successful in this, you know, challenging business in VUCA environment, volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity environment, companies have to be, have to take a more long-term approach and uh, developing an ecosystem has to be one of the major pillars of that strategy. And when you do that, ecosystem takes a long time and it takes a long-term investment in perspective and, and more of a, you know, uh, consistent approach to develop it. Whereas the shareholders are used to, uh, you know, judging the company's uh, performance based on their quarterly earnings. And so their timelines are much more compressed than what the company needs to pursue. In the industrial era, when things weren't changing so much, that model worked. So now one of the major um, responsibilities and roles, roles and responsibilities of, of a firm's um, senior management is to align the shareholder expectations with the, the the environmental mandate so that, you know, we need to change what the shareholders are expecting in terms of what the companies will deliver and shift their focus to have a more long-term perspective. Yeah. And not, not just a single perspective of what the company will deliver, which is what's my dividend going to be and how much is the share price going to go up, but what are my green you know credentials right. and how am I going to contribute to the environment. How? What's my CSR strategy? My corporate and social responsibility right. strategy. And what am yeah, I doing exactly. to benefit? Exactly. In, in perspective. Exactly. So, in the, the, when you look at the entire broader ecosystem, and every company works that way, then the entire society as a whole benefits from it, which assumes um, that every every member um, uh, company is responsible and has the greater good in mind and working together and then um, staking out an, a strategy and then position um, that's differentiated by, you know, for your company that ensures your viability as a going concern long-term at the same time, which is that strategy has to be consistent with the overall ecosystem. And it has to be in harmony with what's happening in the environment and with working with everybody else. And this is why, um, you know, any farm or country that is not working as a good citizen is going to bring down the entire ecosystem. And that's why the pure policing and, uh, you know, uh, the principles of pure policing becomes very, uh, very, very important to monitor and uh, control um, those tendencies.